Okay, so buddy, this is for you. You had mentioned you would like to see someone tune a duplexer uh, with the IFR, and uh, I've got one as well, and so I thought I would uh, give it a shot. I had just tuned this uh, duplexer, which is a Motorola T1500, uh, to a pair of frequencies, and then our local frequency coordinator folks uh, told me that that was not a good frequency to use, so I've, uh, I've got to start over. So I figured this would be a great time to uh, put it on video for you. So first step, I discovered after a painful experience was to make sure that I account for the loss in my cables. So I've got my Gazinta cable here and my Gazata cable there and I took my whole set of connectors. Um, this duplexer has uh, PL connectors on it. So I have uh, you know my BNC into PL and then a PL into BNC and I just stuck a barrel connector between the two and a couple of patch cables on the ends here and the first step is I have a frequency tuned up here and I've got my tracking generator running and I want to zero it out it's set on track low right now which is around minus 50 so what I want to do is tune and make sure that I get the line right on minus 50 and the other trick I found is to uh, vary the intensity so I can sort of fade it out and fade it back in make sure I'm right on the minus 50 line so that's my benchmark for the cables that I've got so next step is I'm gonna plug into the transmit side of this uh, repeater pair and I'm gonna pause the camera for a moment to do that uh, so one moment please alright and we're back so I removed the barrel connector and I plugged my signal generator output into the input of the transmit side of the duplexer and I plugged my um, receiver for the uh, IFR which goes into the antenna port over here into the antenna the T connector for the antenna and I just realized that I probably want to put a dummy load on the receive side so give me another pause I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we're back and so to be faithful I put a 50 ohm dummy load on the end of the receive just so that I don't have an open connection there so taking a look at the tune on this thing it's supposed to be tuned for transmit at 444-750 and if I take a look at the curve it's looking pretty good I'm losing maybe 2 dB there it's hard to tell I'm gonna zoom in really close actually I'm seeing it better on the screen than I was before so losing about 2 dB and the um, receive side is 5 megahertz higher I have the IFR set on the megahertz scale right now so 5 graticules over is we're going to see that uh, uh, 46, 47, 48, or I'm sorry, 45, 6, 7, 8, 49 is right over here. Let me go ahead and tune it in. 4, 4, 9, 7, 5, 0. Oh. And we see that I had put the null, which is on the receive side, in a pretty good place there. And that's adjusted on this. Um, duplexer by sliding these sliders back and forth. As I slid this slider back and forth on this duplexer it actually took this null and moved it side to side. So I shoved this so that I got the null right around 5 uh, megahertz up. So I got that null right around the receive frequency which is what I wanted to do. So anyway this is on the wrong frequency now because I've changed um, the pair. So let me go ahead and put this on the new transmit frequency which is going to be 444.050 and taking a look at the curve now we can see that I'm not where I want to be um, I want that peak to be right up in the center line there so the transmit side has two knobs here for left and right side and these are the ones that are going to move the curves around so I'm going to go back over here and I'm turning the left knob now as I turn the left knob, it's moving that curve over, but you see it's also lowering it. So let me try the right knob and see what happens. Oh, that moves it over nicely. So maybe what I want to do is take the left knob again, whoop, other direction, see if I can get it over to that center point, and then turn this other knob, Let's see if we can get it up, way really way overshot. So it's a, it's a little fussing game here. Aha! Getting close. Make 
actually going to zoom in a little closer to get a better look. I'm seeing it better through my camera phone here than I am. So I'm getting that centered up pretty nicely. No, that's a little higher. When I, put yeah, I had it good. Do, do this. That's looking pretty good right there. So I'm going to zoom in a little closer. So I'm going to take it down to, um, where are we, 1 megahertz right now? And take it to half megahertz. So there we are. I'm losing maybe 1 dB on the transmit side. So that's looking really good. So now my notch might be a little off. It's hard to say because, again, 444 is here and I want to transmit or receive on 449. So that's uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we'll see how that looks. So let me put in the um, receive frequency. 444, 050. Whoops. I'm sorry, 449.050. And if I took a, take a look, I've got a beautiful notch right there. On the receive frequency, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. That is just bottomed right out. So I'm 60 dB down. Now is it minus 50? And I'm down around minus 110. So I've got a beautiful notch there on the transmit side. So I think, or on the receive side. So I think the transmit side of this duplexer is in pretty good shape. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and move things around. I'm going to take this dummy load and put it in the transmit input. And I'm going to leave my gazada here at the antenna, but I'm going to move my signal generator over to the receive side. So, and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'll hit a pause and we'll go do that. And okay, so as advertised, I now have the output of my generator going into the radio side of the receive duplexer. And the uh, um, generator to uh, receive for the generator um, coming out of the antenna port. I moved my um, dummy load over to the transmit side just to get it out of the way. I'm now tuned to the receive frequency, 449050. And if I take a look at the... The notch here, it's a little off center again because this was tuned for a different frequency. So same deal, I've got the two big knobs on the front of the duplexer here. So I'm going to just start diddling these two knobs to see if I can get that peak right over on the correct area. So starting with the left hand knob, let me see what happens. Oh, that's left. left to right. So it goes down either direction I go. All right, so let me try the right hand knob. All right, that adjusts the peak. This one might be a little tougher to get. Hmm, this is tough. So I'm just doing both knobs, doing the best I can to get that peak where I want it. I don't think I can get this left-hand peak to do anything for me. Let me see, can I get that left-hand peak up there? No, not really. I think it wants to be on the right-hand one. So that might be about as good as we get on the receive side. It's a little bit of a bummer. So let's zoom in a little bit here. So we're down maybe two, maybe three, eh, about two dB. So we're down about two dB. I'm zoomed in a little bit. Let me fuss with the knobs just a bit more. There we go. I think that's about the best I can do. So that's around minus 2 dB. So there's my curve. And again, if I look on the transmitter side now, so this is the receive frequency I'm centered on, and uh, down 5 from that is going to be the transmit frequency, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's down in the trough here. So let me go switch it to the transmit frequency and make sure that I'm nulling that out nicely. And go over here, and it's going to be 4, 4, 4. 050. I take a look and look at that. We're down minus 60 dB or more. So we're uh, really nulling out the transmit side. We're maximizing the receive side again. So again, that's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to take that back up. Whoops, wrong direction. So one other thing just to show you what that other adjustment does. And I'll take my life in my own hands and hope I don't 
screw things up so much that I can't fix them. So here's what this uh, curve looks like and you can see how it drops off over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mess with this slider here and just see how the curve behaves. So I'm going to loosen that up and then we'll watch the curve as I slide it left to right. So sliding to the right moves that null closer. Sliding to the left moves it over a little bit. So actually that might have helped me a little bit to get that null over there. So that was the right hand can. Let me go mess with the left hand can, see what that one does. So left hand can, I'm loosening the knob and I'm shifting it. Ooh, that's not what I want to do. So see how that popped up? So I'm going to slide that slider the other direction and that puts the skirt way over there. So let me tighten this back up. And it didn't really do anything to the peak, it was just messing with the skirts. So let me go back to the, uh, well, let me see if that peak can be tuned up a little bit now. Oh, I'm still at minus 2 dB there. I'm just going to turn these knobs just in case that adjustment did me any good. Not really. No, both knobs behaving about the same way. All right. So I'm going to check the transmit frequency again to make sure it's still nicely in the skirts. Whoops, I'm sorry. 444. 050. And if I go back and look, yep, I'm still nicely down about 60 dB from the receive. So that's looking really good. So now the last sanity check I want to do, I think I've got this duplexer tuned, but what I can do, I'm just going to tighten these up because I was messing with them. I'm going to go ahead and inject signal into the transmit port, and what I want to confirm is at the transmit frequency, and I'm going to put my receive side on the radio side of the duplexer and I'll just stick this dummy load over where the antenna is going to be and I want to confirm that I'm just not getting much of any signal through there at all. So one last pause as I recable one last time and we'll see how that looks. Okay, we're back in the final configuration as advertised. The uh, input on the transmit side is if the transmitter's transmitting is here and that's going into the transmit cans. Um, I have a dummy load where the antenna would go, so I have my 50 ohms there. And then on the receive side, where the radio would be plugged in, I have that going back into the IFR. I have the IFR generating signal at the um, transmitter frequency at 444050. And I take a look at where it would be minus 50 dB, and it is nothing. So what I'm gonna do now is just to see if I get anything, I'm gonna change it up to a, a higher, I'm on track low right now. So let me go to track medium. I got a little bit there now. Oh, it's kind of wobbling. I have my hand over the duplexer. I'm waving my hand over the duplexer. I think you can see the signal was changing just as I wave my hand around. So let me take my hand away from the duplexer. So on track medium, I'm at minus 90. And I don't recall where track medium shows up on my... Uh, Graticules there, so let me go ahead and just pull the cable and go into uh, just straight through again. So right now we're showing minus 90 and uh, about 88, and let's um, cable it again. And I'm going to put this uh, the two ends butted together again with this uh, barrel in the middle, so they have all the cable losses incorporated in there, and we'll see what we come out to. Alrighty, we're back, and I put it on track medium, and we can see that uh, it's right up at the top there. It's about minus 35, and now is it uh, minus 88, so what's that, about 55 dB, 53 dB down or so? Um, let me just try moving the vertical position here. Yeah, so we're at about minus 35, and it was at minus 88, so that's 53 dB down. So it looks like I have about 53 dB of attenuation between the two sides. Interestingly, it's less than when I was on track low. It was minus 50 down to minus 110, which we would think was 60 dB of attenuation. Um, I'm not perfectly clear that I'm not getting a little bit of feedback from the cables here. These are cheesy RG58 cables, so that might be a little of what's going on too. So anyway, I think I've tuned this uh, Motorola T1500 duplexer. Uh, to the frequencies I want to try for our repeater, our new repeater, and uh, that's what it looks like when you're doing it with an IFR. And uh, buddy, I hope that uh, was interesting for you. So uh, 73, 
and uh, have a good night.